Oh well. What am I gonna do now? I don't know. Well, we'll just we'll just do the rest of it. This is uh, this is a common problem with obese people, but it can happen to anybody. Uh, I was uh, working with a lady. Her husband was arrested for. Um, they were afraid he was observing children at a grade school. They thought that he was one of those kind of guys. Um, what had happened was uh, he felt tired, so he stopped his car uh, by the side of the road and fell asleep. And he slept for about two or three hours. But he was, he was sitting there in his car, asleep, in front of an elementary school. And he, of course, he didn't understand what he didn't realize what was going on. He didn't even remember stopping. But luckily he stopped. I mean, otherwise he could have caused an accident. Luckily he stopped. So he was, they were gonna, they arrested him. And they were gonna, they were gonna put him in jail for pedophilia or something. Uh, and uh, his wife, <laughs> his wife talked them into giving him a, a sleep analysis. Uh, and they did. They uh, they took him to the hospital and gave him sleep analysis. Turned out he had sleep apnea. He had sleep apnea. So uh, they they released him, of course, because for one thing, he wasn't even conscious when he when he stopped in front of the elementary school. He was asleep the whole time. Nobody claimed that he was watching them. Uh, he looked like he was asleep, but of course, you know you know how people think. They, they figured that uh, he was uh, peeking out the side of his eye and looking at little girls in their, you know, in their underwear or something, whatever. Uh, this was in Omaha. It's kind of kind of an interesting situation. Anyway, he had sleep that. Um, the problem in his family was that he had four daughters, and all of his daughters had um, spina bifida and cystic fibrosis. Usually girls don't get cystic fibrosis. But he had one daughter with cystic fibrosis and three daughters with spina bifida. Now you ask yourself, why in the world did they have so many kids with, with, with problems? And the answer was, they didn't think it was going to happen next time. And it did. It just kept happening. They had four daughters. These were their biological children. Well, actually three of them were their biological children. And then they adopted a, a disabled girl. Uh, but they had three babies, three children, and all three of them had, had physical problems, had uh, developmental problems. It was genetic. They just got the two, two of the wrong people got together and, and made babies. If, if she had had babies with somebody that didn't have the same genetic flaw that she did, they wouldn't have had three, three daughters with uh, spina bifida. And the spina bifida was relatively severe. Uh, at that time, the only way that you, you couldn't really treat spina bifida until after the baby was born. Uh, of course, they're born with an enlarged head because uh, they have uh, spinal fluid that's leaking, uh, and that's, it causes the head to expand. I mean, they, they, used, they used to call it waterhead, but it's, it's hydrocephaly is what it is. Uh, but these individuals, they were able to give them, uh, uh, they were able to do surgery right after their birth. And so they were able to save them all. But uh, they were all disabled. Uh, so they spent their entire evenings you know, bathing the, the, the girls and feeding the girls. They, they were uh, all four, of, all, all three of them had, uh, uh, they were quadru uh, paraplegics. Their, their legs didn't really work. So it was really kind of a, it was a struggle for the, the, the uh, family, as interesting as that is. Uh, most modern sleeping pills activate GABA receptors inhibiting broad regions of the brain, uh, but use of such medications as Halcyon uh, may be a problem. Uh, continual use of, of a sleep-inducing medication may lead to a re reduction of its effectiveness and result in increased dosages that may be a health hazard. And this is something that we've seen with Ambien, with, with just about any sleep aid. Uh, you're better off not, try, not doing it. Um, they, Ambien works, I mean, it knocks you right out, uh, but if you use it over time, of course, it stops working. And then you have to take stronger and stronger doses. Now you're taking a toxic level of Ambien just to be able to go to sleep. 
So that question you have to ask yourself, strangely enough, is uh, what's more important? Usually the reason that you're not sleeping, the reason you have insomnia, there's tons of different reasons for insomnia. Most of them have to do with uh, amphetamines. Uh, so people that take crystal meth, uh, people that take amphetamines, or speed of, speed of any kind, uh, these individuals, of course, will have sleep problems. And uh, once they crash, of course, they'll crash for 12, 18 hours. Uh, but they'll start taking these medications because there is a resi residual effect to the speed and to the, the, the methamphetamines. So there is a reason for their insomnia, but they're taking, they're using a pill to put themselves to sleep. Um, Judy Garland, uh, when she was a child, or when she was a, a child star, they started her on amphetamines because they weren't getting enough work out of her during the day. So they started her on amphetamines. Then at night they gave her barbiturates to put her to sleep. She did this for almost all of her life. She took amphetamines to, so that she could, uh, could perform during the day and then she took barbiturates at night. And it knocked her right up. So the first thing in the morning, she'd wake up with uh, orange juice and, a, and, a hemp and uh, amphetamines. And then at night, she went to bed with a, with a, a handful of amphetamines and, and, uh, and a bottle of, of beer. Or, or, now, Judy Carlin died at 41. Her daughter is Liza Minnelli, right? Liza Minnelli. Okay. And Lorna Luft. That's her, that's her daughter. Lorna Love just wrote a book about Judy Garland. Yeah, there were, I think one of them was actually covering one of them, how the next thing that their mother was in the sentence. They talked about the, the use of drugs and uh, the show business, the man's of it. It was ugly. It was ugly. She died at 41, which was way too, I mean, she looked old when she died. I mean, this, it accelerated her life and then it, it, uh, it slowed her life down. I mean, it was just uh, this strange roller coaster that she was. She uh, her sexual response, but her sexual was she lost her sexual response because there was nothing natural in her life. You know, everything was this this chemically induced high or this chemically induced sleep that she was that she did. And so she lost her ability. Her body stopped doing things, and one of them was. She didn't have a. She didn't have any sexual response. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, what are we talking? About? Okay, we're talking about halcyon. Continual use of the sleep. Oh, we already talked about that. They change their pattern of the sleep that lasts even after the cessation of use. Uh, so uh, on halcyon, you can you go to bed at ten o'clock and you wake at, up at eight o'clock the next morning. Uh, off the halcyon, of course, if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, you lay there and you roll over and over and over until 2 o'clock when you finally fall asleep, and then you wake up at 6 o'clock. So because it was chemically induced before, you were sleeping for 12 hours, now suddenly you're sleeping for 4 hours, and that's the problem with, with any of the sleep aids. If you don't use them, you wake up early. Uh, they tend to, to reduce REM sleep, which accumulates with continued usage, uh, causing an unpleasant rebound with secession. Uh, remember, it's REM that uh, takes away your psychotic thoughts. Uh, if you don't get enough REM sleep, you eventually become psychotic uh, to some extent. Of course, you can recover from that. Uh, the increase in GABA stays with the individual even when awake, causing a drowsy state and this is known as, dr as sleep drunkenness. So that's due to the excess amount of GABA. Some researchers have suggested that the use, the use of melatonin, the hormone that is released by the pineal uh, gland uh, to maintain the individual's circadian rhythm. Uh, melatonin lowers body temperature, reduces your arousal, and it causes drowsiness. But it doesn't put you to sleep. It just makes you sleepy. Of course, Hope is suffering from that right now. <laughs> Another method is to increase the level of serotonin in the system by administering tryptophan. Tryptophan isn't something that you give somebody, 
Tryptophan is found in animal fats, uh, so people that uh, drink milk, and this is one of the reasons why if you drink hot milk or warm milk, uh, that it will put you to sleep. You're increasing your tryptophan level. Because it's warm, of course, uh, it, uh, you digest it much faster. And of course, if you put somebody to bed with a, a, a warm glass of milk, uh, potentially it puts them to sleep re relatively quickly. But that, the reason is because of the tryptophan. Tryptophan is a precursor for serotonin. It increases your serotonin level, knocks you right out. But some people are hypersensitive to tryptophan. I had a student uh, up at Fort Belknap uh, who, uh, if she ate cheese or drank milk, uh, it knocked her out. She went to sleep. So, and she was one of those people, if you offered her free food, she ate it. <laughs> Not only that, but she ate as much as she possibly could because evidently she didn't know where she was going to get more food. <laughs> anyway, but she was a white lady from, from the town right next door. Uh, interesting lady. Uh, anyway, so one time she had uh, cheese pizza. They had cheese pizza. They had free cheese pizza. And of course she ate as much as she possibly could. You know, she's got all the money in the world and she's eating up all the idiots' food, which I, I found kind of rude. But here she is, she's just stuffing this stuff into her mouth. And it's cheese pizza. Jumps in her car to go home, fell asleep before she left the reservation. Ran off the road. Luckily, she ran off the road and didn't roll her car, didn't roll her truck. She was driving the truck. She didn't drive, uh, uh, roll her truck, which happens in Montana a lot because the, uh, the uh, ditches are long. So there's a, a, there's a long uh, entryway into the ditch. So it, it angles, and a lot of people, if they're, especially if they're going too fast, they'll, they'll drive off the road. They get to, uh, if they're going too fast, they'll just make them force him to roll over and over and over. Luckily, she didn't pull up in front of another car. Uh, she went to sleep, ran right through, a, she didn't roll over, she ran through a fence and ended up in the middle of a field, a hay field. So she didn't really hurt anything except the fence that she had to replace. And she tried to sue the school for feeding her cheese pizza. It wasn't the first time she'd fallen asleep, but uh, she ate too. She ate way too much. She was just a goofball. Sleep delay is reduced after uh, without uh, affecting the basic sleep pattern if we uh, if we use tryptophan. Anyway, she used tryptophan. And then like in um, Starbucks, they usually put milk in whatever their coffee and you know, like when they put all kinds of stuff. And they say, oh yeah, coffee's gonna keep you up. But then they add milk. Sure. Yeah. And then it's like a mixture. And when I have it. When I have um, Starbucks, I always get sleepy, and it's the milk. Oh, it's the milk, it's the tryptophan. Yeah. That's sensitive so, to tryptophan. Yeah, so then I ask for soy milk now. Okay, and that's not dairy, so it doesn't have the tryptophan in it. Yes. Very, very smart. Yeah. So when, um, but before I said, why am I sleepy? This is coffee, you know, from Starbucks. But, yeah. So evidently you're not sensitive to caffeine, but you're sensitive to tryptophan. Isn't that fascinating? So now you use soy milk. Brilliant. You don't get the same. And not only that, but can I say this? What time is it? Soy milk, I'm sorry, so, soy has um, uh, uh, phytoestrogen. It's not going to bother you because you're already a female. But, <laughs> if Francis took it, he might develop breasts because it has this, this phytoestrogen. So it increases your estrogen. But it's, it's uh, a plant estrogen. And so the question is, is it real estrogen or is it not? It's estrogen. So potentially it can make boys girls. <laughs> How exciting is that? <laughs> Alcohol does the same thing. Alcohol increases your estrogen, which is really kind of weird. So if you got a, a really good drunk, it's a male drunk, uh, and he's been drinking for a number of years, he'll develop breast tissue. And he'll react less positively to a sexual situation. 
<laughs> as interesting as all that is. Okay. Oh, we're talking about narcolepsy. Uh, this is an affliction where the individual uh, has sudden attacks of sleep that last for five to 30 minutes uh, during waking hours, usually about every 90 minutes. It's just kind of fascinating watching these individuals. I uh, served with an individual with narcolepsy. And uh, the funny thing was, I guess it's not that funny, uh, but the, the interesting thing was, if he got excited, he fell asleep. Uh, so if an emergency came in, and he would, uh, he'd sit down and go to sleep. Well, this doesn't work. I mean, not in a not in a medical situation. You don't want your doctors falling asleep in the middle of surgery. Uh, of course, he wasn't a doctor. He was just a medic. Uh, but he would he would sit down and fall asleep. So they had to change his jobs. This is during Vietnam. Excuse me. This is during Vietnam. Um, so they gave him another job. Of course, we were short manpower anyway. Uh, we were having problems retaining personnel. So they, they gave him another job. Uh, but it had to be a, it was a clerk's job. So they couldn't have any excitement to it or he'd just fall right to sleep. Eventually they, they boarded him out of the service. They just, you know, they tried to tried him in this job and that job and he just couldn't handle it. He'd just fall asleep. Nice guy though, he's really a really nice guy. I uh, played ball with him, played softball with him. Uh, he's a good ball player. Uh, the problem was, uh, he was okay as long as, as long as either we ran up the score or the other team ran up the score. But if it was close, <laughs> you know, and he came up to bat with, we were down two runs and bases were loaded and it, with, there were two outs and he came up to bat, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He'd fall asleep on the bench and we would have to replace it. So <laughs> it, it got kind of interesting. Now the sad part was that he was a good ball player and he had a, he had a pretty good stroke. He had a pretty good stick. So we needed him to get a hit in that situation. So we had to keep somebody on the bench that could replace him if things got too exciting. It was kind of a goofy situation anyway. Uh, what's happening? These individuals are different than normal because they go into REM sleep at the onset of their sleep pattern instead of after about 90 minutes. Uh, these individuals uh, display cataplexy, uh, the loss of muscle tone, sensory hallucinations, and sleep paralysis. So, so they will immediately drop out. And it is really kind of fascinating to watch these individuals fall asleep. Something's happening, boom, they just fall, fall asleep. The problem often is often triggered when the individual becomes excited, as I said before. Let's see. It has been discovered that there are several breeds of dog with a mutated gene that causes orexin neuropeptide to malfunction. Uh, Doberman pinchers, Labrador retrievers, and dachshunds are three breeds where the mutation has uh, been noted. Uh, these are two brother do these are two brothers, and they got real excited to see each other. And the next thing that happened was that they both fell asleep because they both had the the, the uh, uh, mutated gene. So they fell asleep uh, touching each other because they were so excited to see each other. <laughs> Researchers have also produced mice without the orexin receptor who display similar symptoms, narcolepsy. The cells that produce orexin uh, reside in the hypothalamus. Uh, recent rodent studies indicate that these cells connect to brain regions that are involved in sleep and wakefulness, including the locus ceruleus, the raphe nuclei, the tu tuberal mammillary uh, nucleus, the pontine reticular formation, among all other areas of the brain. This evidence suggests that normally uh, orexin helps the sleep and wakefulness areas carry out their jobs. The orexin-related abnormalities may impair their function, and I think I have, I do, okay. So let's see if this still works. Uh, and the answer is yes. Okay. I'm 21 years old, and I suffer from narcolepsy. For those of you that don't know what narcolepsy is, it's whenever you fall asleep in the uh, like in the bar, uh, in the classroom, in the hallway. 
There are five symptoms of narcolepsy. Uh, the first one is obviously falling asleep in random places. Another one is hallucinations, um, which I get like right before I'm about to fall asleep and whenever I wake up. Another one is catalepsy, which is whenever like, I am like, it's pretty much triggered by intense emotion when I'm laughing very hard. <laughs> my body will go like numb, like my muscles will fall asleep, but I'm still awake. Um, and that's pretty much like to paralysis, uh, which is another symptom. And the last symptom is I wake up frequently during that like, my sleep is very much disturbed. Only 15% of the people that have narcolepsy suffer from all five of those symptoms. Before I was diagnosed, I was a pretty good basketball player. I had really good grades. Um, I had a pretty good social life. I went out with my friends all the time. Um, but after I was diagnosed, that pretty much all went down the drain. I found out I had narcolepsy. It was my freshman year in college. I was playing basketball, and I was running down the court, and I was calling for the ball. I got really, really excited, and uh, the next thing I know, I'm on the ground asleep, and I woke up, and I was like, what just happened? And I watched the tape, and it was the weirdest looking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I have fallen asleep in many inappropriate <laughs> places, one including the basketball court, like I said earlier, uh, another bar, going to class, in class, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I've also fallen asleep while driving uh, during an interview, obviously. Um, Pretty much everywhere, at least once or twice. Whenever I'm like walking and I have nothing like hold on to or anything, I pretty much just go up and make up and see all. It's kind of embarrassing because I've just seen people walk by and I'm like, there's a girl sleeping against the wall in the middle of the hallway. Unfortunately, I can't do a lot of things that other people my age get to do. I can't swim. Um, I can't ride a bike, I'm not allowed to drive, um, I can't have intimate relationships, if you know why. Narcolepsy is not a joke, um, unfortunately, it's not a joke. there is no cure for it, and they do not know what causes it, so until they find a cure, I am just going to have to suffer through this. It's dangerous. Most of those weren't real, but I mean, it, it actually is real for this lady. She actually does have narcolepsy. And they can't drive. You don't want them to drive. You certainly don't want them to drive. Uh, and they really can't have sex either because if they get excited, they fall asleep. So, yeah, this is kind of a mean one. This is what it really looks like. Okay, um, right now, me and my brother are gonna scare my fiance because my fiance has this uh, this little tick, this little problem. She actually has narcolepsy, and whenever she gets scared or she gets really excited, she tends to pass out. So what I did is I had my brother go outside the door. And I said a certain word, he's gonna bust in the door, and she needs to be scared, and uh, we're hoping that she can pass out. So let's see what happens here.
figure out where That is just downright mean. Mm -hmm. She didn't marry the guy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, good, exactly. Exactly. Okay, I got one more. If it works. Uh, Human brain waves, part two of the biopsychological effects of ascension by Danny So. The brain has its own set of electrical frequencies it uses to communicate with itself and the rest of the body. The electroencephalograph, or EEG, measures brain waves at different frequencies within the brain. Waves can overlap somewhat, merging seamlessly into one another. Brain waves are measured in cycles per second, or hertz. EEG frequencies include gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. These frequencies are linked to behaviors, subjective feeling states, and psychological correlates. The frequency bands and waves characteristics are described as follows. Gamma waves. 25 to 60 hertz. Gamma waves relate to simultaneous processing of information from different brain areas. They are involved in memory, learning abilities, integrated thoughts, or information task processing. Gamma rhythms modulate perception and consciousness, which disappear with anesthesia. Beta waves, 12 to 25 hertz. Beta waves dominate our normal waking state of consciousness when attention is directed towards a cognitive task and the outside world. Beta is the fast activity, present when we are alert or even anxious, or when engaged in problem solving, judgment, decision making, information processing, mental activity and focus. Alpha waves, 7 to 12 hertz. Alpha waves are triggered during dreaming and light meditation when the eyes are closed. As more and more neurons are recruited to this frequency, alpha waves cycle globally across the whole cortex. This induces deep relaxation. In alpha, we begin to access the wealth of creativity that lies just below our conscious awareness. It is the gateway the entry point that leads into deeper states of consciousness. Alpha waves aid overall mental coordination, calmness, alertness, inner awareness, mind-body integration, and learning. Alpha is the home of Schumann's resonance, 7.83 Hz. When we intentionally generate alpha waves, we go into resonance with the Earth's frequency. We naturally feel better, refreshed, in tune, and in sync. In fact, it's environmental synchronization. That is why you feel relaxed and at peace when you're in the country or on a secluded beach. Your brain is resonating with the earth. Theta waves, four to seven hertz. Theta waves occur most often in sleep also dominant in the deeper states of meditation. In theta, our senses are withdrawn from the external world and focused on the mind scale, internally originating sounds. Theta meditation. Theta waves are associated with mystery. It is that twilight state which we normally only experience fleetingly as we rise from the depths of delta upon waking or drifting off to sleep. Theta meditation increases creativity, enhances learning, 
reduces stress and awakens intuition and other extrasensory perception skills. Delta waves, zero to four hertz. Delta waves are the slowest but highest in amplitude. They are generated in the deepest meditation and dreamless sleep. Delta waves confer a suspension of external existence and provide the most profound feelings of peace. In addition, certain frequencies within the delta range trigger the release of a growth hormone, which is beneficial for the healing and regeneration process. This is why deep, restorative sleep is so essential in the healing process. Brain waves affect the way we feel, our health and our ability to learn. Alpha waves induce feelings of peace and harmony and just happen to be the same frequencies as Schumann's resonance. This is no coincidence. After all, our brains did evolve on this planet within the Schumann's cavity. However, as we have learnt, the Schumann's resonance is rising, so our brain waves are no longer in sync with the Earth. Join me for part three to learn what direct effects to our health are caused by this out of sync between our brain and Schumann's resonance. So if you've ever talked to Don Robinson about meditation, <laughs> this is what he was talking about. <laughs> Schumann's resonance is the uh, uh, the natural... Schumann resonance effect on human health. No, 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 no. no. Part three of the... No, I don't. Okay, anyway, that's Schumann's resonance. So if you just go out, uh, actually, there's hardly, there's not a whole lot of noise around here unless there's an airplane flying over. Uh, so if you ju you're just standing out in the middle of one of the pinyon forests and there's not a car going by, um, then uh, the amount of noise that is being, uh, that is being made is, is at 7 hertz. And that's the natural noise of the vibrations of the earth and uh, gravity and whatnot. Anyway, that's Schumann's resonance. And so what they're talking about is that we try to lower our brain waves to that, that level. And that, that's perfect harmony. I mean, you guys talk about harmony all the time. This is harmony with the, the earth. And they say that uh, Schumann's resonance is, is, is uh, increasing, especially now that uh, we've had so many earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, uh, you know, all, all the weather is becoming more violent. Um, uh, this week it's been uh, below zero in, in New Mexico. Yeah, up in Santa Fe and all the way down to Albuquerque. It's, it's been really, really cold. Even they, in Texas, too. They've never seen this before. Yeah, even in Texas. One of these in Texas right now. Oh, is that right? It's really cold. Yeah. And Texas is usually hot, right? Well, Kind of. Well, it depends on where you are. Well, <laughs> Up in the Panhandle, it's pretty damn cold. Yeah, Houston area. Oh, he's way down in Houston, and it's that cold? Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. He said it was cold. He was wearing a beanie. It's like, I don't know. I thought it was supposed to be hot over there. Well, this is really kind of funny because uh, uh, Marius mm -hmm. doesn't have any winter clothes. Well, he's from Snowflake. And he, he's complaining he doesn't like coming up here in the wintertime because it's so damn cold. It's cold here lately. He does, the guy doesn't even have a coat. Well, he's got a jacket, but he doesn't have a coat. Who doesn't have a winter coat? People in Phoenix, I guess. And people in Snowflake. And Sharon, who doesn't, always wears a sweatshirt. Okay. You need a down jacket, that's what you need. Oh, I can't bring this up. 